Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I'm a UCLA medical student and in this corner of the internet, we learn the fundamentals and the strategies to live happier, more fulfilling pre-med years. Today, we're going over real concepts with deep details and actual examples of how to best effectively study. As a student, it's no secret that the majority of your time will be spent studying. Therefore, no matter where you are in your student journey, it's best if you can dial that in perfectly. Today, we'll talk about how. If you have any other questions, please feel free to DM me on Instagram here, but otherwise, let's get started. All right, so now let's move on to the next big topic, your learning environment. First, let's talk about the obvious part of your learning environment, your location. You study best at home, in the library, at the cafe. Be honest with yourself. Where are you getting the most done? Of course, there isn't a perfect location, but what's closest to it for you? In addition, consider modifying your environment so that it becomes better suited for studying. For example, if you're like me, you love studying at home. You have a dual monitor set up, an external keyboard, an external mouse, and everything just flows better when you're at home. Of course, when you're at home, your bed's also really close, your roommates are next door, and there's a full fridge of food waiting for you to just snack on. These are opportunities for you to modify your environment to not be tempted by those distractions. For example, can you put some books on the side of your bed just so whenever you're tempted to go in and take a little bit of a nap, you have to climb over or go around those books. It's a little bit cumbersome, definitely doable, but sometimes that little friction is enough just to prevent you from snuggling back into bed. Of course, you can be more extreme. The more extreme, the more friction you add, the harder it becomes to get into bed. For those of you with bunk beds, you could take down the ladder, put it away, maybe put it in a closet or something like that. Or for you extremists out there, and it's gonna sound silly, but of course it's gonna work. You could remove your entire mattress, put it away, and only put it back when you're ready to go to bed that night. That way, there's no way you're crawling into bed. The second part of your learning location is the people that you're studying with. Do you prefer to study by yourself? Do you prefer to study in groups, 50-50? Study by yourself and chances are you can't get distracted by your friends. Study in groups and you have the opportunity to teach one another the concepts that are gonna be on your exam. 75% of the time or more, I'm studying by myself. Again, I just like my home setup and I feel comfortable here. I do like studying in groups though, when I feel like I've mastered the material. That's when I have the opportunity to teach other people and see if they truly understand what I think I understand. If you do decide to study in groups, keep them small, no more than three people. Anything past that and you're really looking at a social excursion with a side of studying. You wanna make the studying the main course and the social excursion the side dish, if at all. Your friends may be on a different page than you are. They may not have reviewed all the material that you have, and they may think this is more of a social excursion than a studying excursion. Feel free to tell them. Feel free to make the expectations clear. Let them know that you wanna go over the key objectives and some of the practice problems, just because you wanna find out if there are any knowledge gaps that you haven't covered yet. It'd be nice if they were on the same page. The last thing I'll mention for your study environment is trying something called the Pomodoro Technique. It's a fan favorite amongst all of the YouTube study community. Simply put, you choose one task and bonus points if you write that one task on a whiteboard or a post-it or type it up and blow it up real big on your computer. But you just work on one task for 25 minutes, then you get a five minute break, guaranteed. Okay, let's talk about the third part of studying effectively, obtaining the information that you need. The first thing that you're gonna have to decide is whether you're going to go to lecture or not. And there's arguments for both sides. If you had a lecture live, it can be super useful to have a routine. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're showing up at that lecture at 8 a.m. no matter what. Then, there's no way you'll be behind on lectures. Thirdly, you can also ask any questions that you might have live. The professor is right there with you. If you decide not to watch the lecture live, then you'll watch the video or the podcast recording on your own time. This can have its benefits too. For example, you can watch it at a time where you're most conducive to learning. Chances are, most of us don't learn organic chemistry the best at 8 a.m., right when we just woke up. Instead, if you have the flexibility, you can watch the recorded podcast later at night when you may be more alert and ready to learn. In addition, some of us just don't learn well in a lecture hall. The seats are just far too uncomfortable and all of your friends are in class. It's really hard to focus. 
In addition, you'll be able to pause and rewind any topics that just didn't make sense to you. If a topic does make sense to you, you'll also be able to fast forward those so you can get through those quicker. And if any of you guys are like me, sometimes professors just speak too slowly. And I can't focus when people speak that slowly. So at home on the recorded podcast, you have the ability to speed up a professor and that can promote focus as well. But of course, the biggest con to watching podcasts at home and not going to lectures live is that we feel comfortable. We feel like because all the podcasts are there, we can watch them at any time and any day. And eventually, of course, we'll catch up. Remember, just because the podcasts are available to you doesn't mean that that's a reason to procrastinate on the lectures. You do not want to start getting behind three lectures, five lectures, seven lectures. And then you find yourself one week out from the exam and you have an entire semester's worth of lectures that have gone unwatched. Now, whether you go to lecture live or you watch it on your own time, you're gonna have to decide how to take notes. Do you handwrite them? Do you type them? Or do you do something in between with an Apple pencil and an iPad? And the science is out on this. There's no true best way, but here are a couple of pointers. When you handwrite your notes, you're forced into active learning. You're forced to condense the material real time just because there's no way you can write every word for word that the professor is saying. That means you are condensing the information as you're hearing it. Now that can be useful because you're working through the information, you're really thinking about it and seeing where it fits in your neural network. It can also be a detriment because you're thinking about the professor's last sentence while he's going on to the next sentence and things are kind of going too fast for you to comprehend all at once. If you're typing, you can keep up. The problem with typing though, is that it can put you in a state of passive learning. For those of us that type pretty fast, we have the luxury of typing every word the professor says. And that can be not very useful. At that point, you're not engaging with the material and all you're really doing is a live typing test. You're not thinking. All you're doing is putting all of your mental energy into typing every single word and making sure that you don't miss a single one. If I asked you a question about it, you probably couldn't tell me the answer. Okay, let's move on to learning from textbooks. Like every learning resource, there's an opportunity to learn passively through textbooks and actively through textbooks. When you have the chance, of course, choose to learn actively. Highlighting a textbook is a very common way of learning. Unfortunately, just because it's common doesn't mean it's very effective. In fact, highlighting is extremely ineffective. It's a passive form of learning. Instead, try to summarize what you're reading in your own words, or try to link it with other things that you've learned in the past. That's an active way to use your textbook. Before we go on to reviewing your information, a small note on rewatching lectures and rereading textbooks. When you can, please try to avoid doing so. I genuinely think it's a waste of time. Even if your professor primarily tests on lecture slides, it's in your best interest just to watch it once. Rewind if you have to, pause if you have to. But on the second go around, choose forms of active learning. Condense the information yourself, make your own practice problems, and teach it to your friends. The fourth pillar of effective learning is reviewing effectively. Again, your goal is to understand the material, not just transcribe everything the professor has ever said and memorize that verbatim. That knowledge won't be very flexible and won't be very useful come test day. You most likely have loads of information. Do your best to summarize that in your own words. Condense it to the tightest possible concepts that you can. Here's an example from a medical school textbook called First Aid. It's jam packed with only the highest yield points. I found this annotation on Instagram by Doodle Doctor or Dr. Gretel D'Souza. You can see that she actually uses different colored pens to indicate different important parts for each condition here. While that may or may not be for you, make sure you're condensing your information in a way that makes sense to you. A key concept to understand about reviewing is Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve gives a relationship between time and the amount of information that you remember. You can see here, after 18 minutes, people have forgotten almost 50% of what they had just read or learned. However, if you're able to test yourself or relearn the material at that time, you can see that the retention goes back to 100. And then when it falls again, the second repetition within one day, you can see that the concept itself hasn't fallen that far. It didn't go all the way down to 50%, but only to 70%. In other words, the decay is slower because you reviewed it the second time. You review it again, goes back to 100%, and now the third repetition, which is seven days later, it's only fallen to 80%. The idea of Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve is to ensure that you review material right before you're going to forget it. 
That way you can give yourself a reminder of what the concept was and that concept will last in your mind for longer periods of time. One way to take advantage of Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve is to make your own flashcards and review them daily. Softwares like Anki can help you with this. Every day, you'll receive a deck of cards that will remind you of the concepts that you're just about to forget. By reviewing them, you're able to restore that knowledge up to 100% and keep it in your mind for a longer period of time. Another great benefit of flashcards is that you only have to do one at a time. You can do five while you're waiting in line for groceries. You can do 45 while you're waiting for your laundry to dry. And you could probably do another 30 while you're waiting for your late friend to pick you up for dinner. This helps with studying the same way the Pomodoro technique does. You no longer have to get through a thousand or 2000 flashcards. You just need to do 10 here and 10 there and 10 there. And eventually you'll have finished all of them. This breaks up big pockets of studying, studying for four plus hours or more, which seem very, very daunting into small packets of time. Five minutes here, 10 minutes there, 15 minutes there, that all add up. One last thing about flashcards. When you make them, make sure that you're making them the right way. Prioritize recalling information over recognizing it. Recalling information is when you have to pull all the information from your brain. There's no real prompts to help you along. Recognizing, on the other hand, is like a multiple choice question. It gives you a couple of choices, and if you can recognize what's right, then that's it. Of course, recalling information is much harder, so when making your flashcards, try to make them so that you're forced to recall the information as opposed to recognize it. All right, the remainder of the video are overall tips to make sure that your studying is effective. Of course, we harp on this all the time, but please get enough sleep. The eight hours of sleep or however you need allows you to intake information more readily. And I'll give you an analogy to understand the importance of sleep. Sleep is like a funnel. It allows you to pour information down much easier. Imagine pouring peppercorns into this small little opening without the use of a funnel. When you sleep, you now have this large funnel that makes information much more easy to pour into your mind. Overall tip number two, know that successful people don't have insane willpower or unbelievable levels of discipline. Worse yet, don't believe that they're just inherently smarter than you by orders of magnitude. They're not. They're just better prepared with better habits. The important part is that these are skills that you can develop over time. And while it may sound woo woo, it's important for you to believe that you can improve your studying techniques. It doesn't matter how many tips or tricks I give you, if you don't believe that you can get the grades that you want, no one can help you. Lastly, a small note on anxiety. I found that many students that I've worked with are anxious just because they're not well prepared. If you're taking advantage of the best study techniques consistently, there's no reason to be anxious. You're well prepared and you deserve to get the grade that you do. Here's a quote from Coach K, the head coach of Duke Basketball and Team USA. Before you win, you have to deserve to win. And the same is with studying. Before you go into the exam, do you deserve to get that A? If you do, if you put in the hard, correct, disciplined work, and you genuinely feel like you deserve that A, then don't be anxious. You're gonna get that A. If you don't feel like you prepared the way you wanted, that's when anxiety can creep in. In that's video, that's the most effective science-backed fundamentals of studying. Master these tools and I promise you, you'll learn more information in less time. Information you learn will stick. Concepts will come much easier to you. And the extra time you've earned, go spend it however you want. You've earned it. If anything, that's probably my biggest motivation to study so I can get it done with and go on living the life that I want to live. No one likes being in front of a computer all day anyway. If you liked the video, please do subscribe, hit that like button and press the bell notification to be notified of any time I post a new video. Like I said earlier, if you have any questions, you can find my Instagram here. Please do send me a message. And if you're a local UCLA student, please do check out our partners for this video, the UCLA Pre-Med Community Club. They have great resources for all UCLA undergrad pre-meds, and they're a great place to start if you're looking for help on your own journey. Until next time, take it easy. Dope, oh, shoot, you're still here? Well, thanks for watching to the end of the video. And second, I, I was just working on this quiz. It's this medical school chances calculator. Uh, you just take a 10 question quiz and at the end of it, you get your strengths, your weaknesses and a customized school list. If you wanna take it, here's the QR code. I mean, if that didn't work, um, here's a QR code as well. And then I'll also put the link in the description box below. Well, I'm gonna go back to finishing the quiz and I'll see you later.